welcome to the second preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. Neil Perrett joins me as we look ahead to another big fixture in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at that defeat in the Carabao Cup to Burton. We'll also be joined by none other than Arnout Dan Juma. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against West Ham United here at Vitality Stadium. Well, we're going to start back at that game on Wednesday night and that defeat to Burton in the Carabao Cup. Neil, it was, uh, it was certainly one to forget, wasn't it? Very disappointing night all round. As the manager said, no, not, not, too many perform not too many players came out of the game with, with too much credit. Need to look at the positives. Simon Francis came back, Lloyd Kelly came back, Arnout Down Juma came off the bench. So, fortunately, West Ham had a similar chastening experience in their game against Oxford United. So, you can see that both teams will be certainly be out to put things right on uh, when they meet tomorrow. And it was a strange second half, wasn't it? The floodlights, they went on and off three different times and it was certainly very disruptive for, for both sets of players. Very disruptive for both sets of players. Um, obviously, we were looking to get the, the, the goal back at the time as well, so that would have disrupted our flow. You, you really have to feel for the supporters, though, going through that, having to drive all the way up there, um, see the team lose in, in the way they did, and then stay in there for an extra half an hour because of three floodlight failures. Nobody's fault, you know, outside of everybody's control, unfortunately. But like you said, it's one to draw a line under. Let's look forward to the West Ham game. One positive to come from the game, Simon Francis, his first minute since Boxing Day, that for him would have been, you know, quite a reward for all of his hard work. I'm sure that um, on, the, on the journey home, Simon Francis would have been absolutely delighted, the fact that he's got those minutes under his belt. Like you said, it's been nine months. It's been a long, gruelling, hard nine months recovering from you know a bad injury and he's you know he's one of the older guys to suffer the injury as well so you know it, it would have been a great night for him okay he was you know he would have been as disappointed as everybody else with the performance and the result and bowing out of the competition that we've reached the quarterfinals in for the last two years um, so like I say you know we let's get Freno back into the the Premier League squad um, and move on. And a first proper look as well at, at Lloyd Kelly and Arnout Dan Juma. They both played a part last night and their first competitive appearance for the club. Yeah, once again, I mean, um, I'm not saying that these games are there to, to get people back um, from, you know, get people's fitness back. You know, they're there to be won and to progress in the cup. But, you know, a silver lining, if you like, is the fact that Frano and Lloyd Kelly and Arnout Dan Juma made their competitive comebacks. Frano and Lloyd Kelly obviously played in the under 21s last week. But, um, you know, the more players that the manager can have at his disposal, the better. You know, we've still got other players to come back, Dan Gosling and Junior Stanislas and David Brooks. You know, once, once the whole squad is fit and available, you know, you wouldn't want to swap places with the manager. You wouldn't want to try and pick a team from that squad. And they're slowly coming back, aren't they? You know, Simon Francis, Lloyd Kelly, Arnout, Dan Jima. It's not just a boost for them, but a boost for the whole squad, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I said, one, you know, once they're all there, they're fit and firing and ready to go. It's going to be a really, really difficult team to pick. And not only a difficult team, it's going to be a difficult bench to pick from the manager because, you know, lots of people have been saying for a manager to turn around and look at his bench and see seven established, if you like, Premier League players to choose from. I mean, how, how you can change and turn a game when you make substitutions then. Absolutely. Well, after the game last night, Eddie Howe spoke to AFC BTV to give his thoughts on the defeat. Eddie, a frustrating night for your side. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, hugely disappointed. Uh, really feel for um, the supporters who made the journey to watch that today. That was, yeah, it was disappointing. Um, never got going in the game. Never showed our true qualities, uh, our capabilities. Um, yeah, we're feeling, uh, feeling the pain for them tonight. And just talk us through that second half. It was a bizarre second half. The floodlights went off three times. It must have been difficult to, you know, stay focused during that period. It was difficult. I wouldn't say difficult to stay focused. We can't use it as an excuse. The first half performance was was well off the levels that we expect. The second half was better. Yes, it was a fragmented half and difficult to build true momentum into it, but um, that's not the reason we lost. And you said the second half was better there. What did you make of the substitutions when they came on? Uh, yeah, we tried to change. We were changing a lot to try and get a foothold in the game. We, we weren't... Um, we weren't the dominant team tonight, it really, for, for many phases of that game. And that's hugely frustrating with the quality that we had on the pitch. So we were trying to change systems and ways of playing to try and get uh, that control that we needed. We had it for elements of both halves, but nowhere near 
um, the level that we would expect and, but, and fully deserve to win today. You can't take anything away from their performance. And a word on Simon Francis, it was his first competitive minute since Boxing Day. How did you feel that he got on? Yeah, I thought he did really well. I think um, great to have him back. He's a huge presence in the dressing room and uh, at the football club and um, he did very well. And Lloyd Kelly as well, it was his debut for, for the club, a first competitive appearance for him. Likewise, how did you feel that he did? Yeah, I think Lloyd um, will be better for the game. I think um, obviously he hasn't played for a long period of time and I think um, we know his capabilities. We think he's an outstanding talent. It will only get better, but um, found it difficult tonight. I think the whole team did to, to get any type of composure on the ball and look really controlled. So work for us to do. And just finally, the game against West Ham on Saturday. What are your thoughts ahead of that one? Well, we need um, to respond back at home on the back of two really good Premier League wins. We need to um, try and erase this from the memory pretty quickly, but learn the lessons from it and um, yeah, focus on the next match. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking to AFCB TV after last night's defeat. You can also hear from Simon Francis on our website and across our social media. Now then, as you can see, we have been joined by none other than Arnap Danjima. Arnap, thank you for joining us. Just tell us what the last couple of months have been like. How are you settling in here at Bournemouth? Um, it's getting, uh, yeah, it's getting good to be fair. Uh, I recently found a place to live in. Uh, I've been in the hotel for some, for some weeks now. Uh, obviously the injury was a bit bothersome, uh, it was frustrating to get injured at the beginning of the season but uh, yeah, I'm grateful that it's, uh, that it's over now and I'm looking forward to making some minutes for the club. And how did you respond to that? It must have been hard, you know, coming to a new club, picking up an injury quite early on. How was that mentally for you? Yeah, it was really frustrating, uh, especially for me. I'm really a football lover and I really like to play football. So to get injured at the beginning of the season was really, really frustrating. But uh, yeah, then again, I'm really, uh, really happy that it's over now and I'm really looking forward to making some minutes. What do you find the main differences are between living in England and living in Holland and Belgium? Um, <laughs> the first thing, obviously, is that they drive on the left. Uh, but I'm, I'm used to it now. Um, yeah, no, I think Belgium and Holland are quite similar. Uh, but to be honest, in England, a lot is different, you know. The just just the the general the general things where, uh, yeah, where they where they what they used to live for, like uh, they pay in pounds, we pay in euros, you know, all all those kind of stuff. But yeah, to be fair, the the lads and the 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 staff, everybody helped me in to settle good, so I really didn't have any problems uh, settling in. Obviously, we all think this is a really nice nice part of the country to live. What do you think about living in this part of England? No, it's uh, it's good, <laughs> of course. Uh, the weather here is a lot better than uh, than the other places in England, and uh, no, to to until now it's it's uh, it's been a, go a good experience. And you've been here a couple of months now. How welcoming have your your teammates been in that time? No, I've had a very warm welcome. Um, I'm used to the to the club now, and uh, the first weeks it was all it was it was all about getting uh, used to the new teammates, the staff, uh, the training, and stuff like that. Uh, but. Yeah, it, uh, it feels like home now, so uh, it's good. And just tell us about Eddie Howe and his training sessions. A lot of the players say they're very intense. Do you find that as well? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's no lie that the, that the training uh, <laughs> is very intense. But then again, I think that's good and that's, that's what you need to play in the Premier League, so it will only benefit us. And you, you got your first run out against uh, Burton in the Carabao Cup. Wasn't the result we were looking for, but just tell us about your own, your own performance that night. You must have been absolutely delighted to come off the bench. Yeah, yeah, I was absolutely delighted to come off the bench uh, to get my first uh, first official minutes in. But yeah, then again, if you lose 2-0 in the cup, it's uh, yeah, it's frustrating, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you would rather come in uh, in a win. But yeah, I was uh, I'm I'm not unhappy about my performance. I think I've uh, yeah, I did what I could. Um, I played a, played personally a good game, but then again, if you lose 2-0, that really doesn't matter. So yeah, it's a bit of both. The supporters will be desperate to know how close you are to knocking on the door for the for the Premier League. So how, how close are you? If the manager said, are you ready for Saturday, are you? No, I've been ready from the first second I've been here. So uh, <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> but even though you've had the injury setback, you're fully over that now? Yeah, yeah, no, the injury will not... Uh yeah, well, will not will not have a, have a huge impact on me. It's, it's has, it has just been some uh, some few weeks to recover, but yeah, quality is permanent. So I'm hoping to uh, to show what I've got. And just finally, Arna, West Ham at home here on the weekend in the Premier League. You're back fit. You played your first competitive minutes earlier in the week. You must be really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, I've been looking forward to every minute as as well as uh, as yesterday. 
So uh, now the next step is now making some minutes in the Premier League and uh, yeah, doing the best I can for the for the club and for the team. Well, Anna, thank you very much for joining us. I'm well, sure we're all very much looking forward to seeing you out on that pitch. Now then, our attention turns to that game against West Ham on the weekend, and it was quite the performance last time out here at Vitality Stadium. On the edge of the six-yard box, Wilson looking to break out. He's got Fraser, who scoops it past his man. Can he keep that one in right, Fraser? He will. He gets his head up to see who's arriving in the middle for him. Fraser continues the run. Diop slides in, catches Fraser late, runs to Callum Wilson! What a finish! up beautifully with a cherry top scorer and he smashed it with his right foot no chance for Amiansky. deadlock broken eight minutes into the second half All the big guns are out of the way as they try and put Brooks through. There's a real chance here for a second. Brooks to King! A huge win for the Terries. Joshua King from close range puts the game to bed. Well, that was last time out here at Vitality Stadium. Neil, a, a different game this time last year, and we're going into this one, and it's a top six clash. It's just what you wanted, isn't it? It's, it's um, you know we're sixth and they're fifth, all to play for. Um, it just so happens to be West Ham. We have so many good games against West Ham, lots of goals. Got a good record against them, particularly at home. Um, did the double over them last season, all to play for, like I said. What I like about this game is, it's, I'm not going to say it's going to define anybody's season, but you know we're coming into this game on the back of two wins, three wins. All of a sudden you start thinking, you know, we could do something really good this season with three wins under our belt. You know, a defeat would obviously check things, but you know, not it's not the worst. I mean, we, we, we've equaled our best start to a season as we did last season. So really, really looking forward to this one against an informed West Ham team. And West Ham, you know, they, they had a brilliant result against Man United last week. They'll be high on confidence, won't they? Yes, they will. I mean, everybody's talking about Manchester United having a sticky patch and you know they clearly are but even so you still got to you still got to beat them and um, what a feather in the cap it is I remember when we beat Manchester United here it was you know it was just one of the most outstanding results of the season and probably of the club's history so you know to beat Manchester United is a, is a fantastic result it's put them into fifth place there on 11 points one more point um, th than we've got which is why there's so much at stake on, sa on Saturday. And it's worth mentioning as well we didn't have a great result in the week against Burton they did not have a good result against Oxford losing four no. Two teams are going to be licking their wounds. I know that the personnel will probably change quite dramatically, but both managed, you know, both managers were at the, at the helm for those games, so they'll certainly be uh, hope probably using that as a motivational tool for their players. But let's look a little, just a few days further back at the, you know, the win at Southampton, the win against Everton. We can take those two performances and those two results into the game and play with real confidence. And as you mentioned, three wins in a row would be quite something, wouldn't it? And a, you know, a real statement to the rest of the teams in the league. Well, we all know how easy it is to go on a winless run in the Premier League. You know, you look at you look at our record since we've been in the league and you look at all the teams around us you know you can go seven eight nine games without winning a game so to win three it's like winning the lottery really uh, if you can you know and you've got to look at the fixtures you know there's more points to be to be had there in, in the weeks to come so to go in to go into the Arsenal game on the back of three wins what massive confidence that would give us and in terms of West Ham you know they've certainly got some players to look out for signing Haller in the summer they've also got the likes of Felipe Anderson as well Got some, got a wealth of talent. Um, the squad's definitely improved since last season. Uh, Jack Wilshire, who's who's there, who was here on loan, you know, a, a much vaunted player while he was here on loan, is obviously there as well. And obviously that their squad is is really really good. You know, they they've got 11 points from their opening games. They've just beaten Manchester United. They've got a very good manager there as well. So they're going to be formidable formidable opposition as they always are. And as for for us, we talked a little bit about it earlier. But players coming back from injury as opposed to just getting injuries, which is something we haven't seen for for quite some time, is it? Well, definitely. And um, 
whilst you could argue that you know last night's performance hasn't given the manager a selection headache but you know he will be you know looking at the team against Southampton can he, is there any any possible improvements he could make there there might be there might not he might stick with the same team but if not to have people like Simon Francis Lloyd Kelly Arnaud Danjuma you know possibly in, in contention even if it is just for the bench you know what what a great wealth of options that could give him and as for Callum Wilson, four goals in his last three Premier League appearances and he just loves playing against West Ham, doesn't he? Scoring in both fixtures against them last season. He does. He, certain players seem to enjoy and, and do well against certain clubs. I know we spoke about it the other week when we played Everton. Joshua King seems to score goals against Everton. I was looking at Callum's record earlier. He's got six goals in six performances against West Ham. That hat-trick as well, was in first Premier League win, he got that hat-trick against West Ham. Yeah, that 4-3 in, I think that was August 2015, our first Premier League win, as you said, our first Premier League hat-trick. We've got three Premier League hat-tricks, two of them have been against West Ham, Joshua King got one as well. Um, so Callum's got a fantastic record, he didn't score for the first couple of games of this season and everybody was saying, oh, you know, Callum's on a bit of a drought and then boom, all of a sudden he gets four goals. Um, you know, and he's certainly helping everybody's FPL teams who's made him captain like I have as well, so that's great. Well, a very good choice indeed. If you are over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score this weekend, you can head over to the Mansion website and you could win four tickets to our next home game against Norwich City. That's all we've got time for today. If you are coming to Vitality Stadium tomorrow, we hope you enjoy the game. But if not, keep an eye on all of our social media channels and the website for the latest updates. Bye for now.